give you a little bonus here while we're talking about uh, brushes. I'm just sitting here looking up on uh, my wall the map of the United States that was produced by Imus Geographic. It's the one that Slate called the best paper map of the United States you will ever see, and it had won best in show for the Cartography and Geographic Information Society's comp uh, cartography competition, which is sort of the most sought after prize in cartography. Uh, and I'm noticing that one of the things that he did for the lines that separate time zones was use little tiny t's uh, to separate time zones. So we do have text here in um, Illustrator. So let me just type in a t so you can see what I'm talking about and make a couple of copies. So actually his time zones, the lines that he used for his time zones, are these little teeny tiny t's. Uh, that line up and follow the time zone. I got to thinking that, oh, we could probably do that using a brush because I'm, I'm very, very sure that what he did not do was go through and try to align little tiny T texts like I'm trying to do here and make sure that they're all perfectly distributed and so forth for the limits of his time zones. I'm probably sure uh, that what he did was create a custom brush for this. So this kind of gives you an example of something neat that you could do. Uh, and let's see if we can replicate that effect. I'm going to delete this over here. This looks like a perfect job for the pattern brush. So if we come over here, let's think about what we want to do. We want to have a T and we want to have a little gap uh, before something else starts, before the next T starts. So this T with uh, some kind of little gap on the end is going to be our most minimum unit that we want to repeat. I'm pretty sure that the uh, pattern brush is not actually going to let me make a pattern out of text. A T is a pretty simple form, so I could just draw a T with two different bars and align them. That would be no problem. But while I've actually done a T here, or if I were using a T with a very different font, hey, let's just try that. Let's, uh, for the sake of example, notice that when I have T selected, uh, I can go over here to uh, my characters. Oh, right up here, character, and I could select a different font. Um, so let me make a, a, a selection here that might not be so easy for me to replicate with just two different lines. Well, you know, if I were to use Times New Roman, there. It's got the serifs and stuff on it. His doesn't, but this would be something that I wouldn't want to have to redraw. But what I can do is I can uh, right click on the text and I can say create outlines. And now it actually converted that T. Now Illustrator no longer understands that T is text. Uh, you notice that when I click on it now, I don't have that option up here to change the font because it's no longer text as far as Illustrator is concerned. It's just an outline of that shape. Instead, I get all of the little nodes that goes to creating it. There are probably multiple ways I could put that space in there, but let me do it in a way that have, I have a lot of control over it. Uh, let me create a box for the T to sit on. And maybe I like that amount of gap. So what I would want this to look like are those T's lined up something like that. Okay, take that, delete that, and then what I'm going to do is just say keep that box there but give it no outline color and no fill. That might be the first time we've seen that. There's no, the box disappears because there's no outline and there's no fill. Notice that when I go over here and I select it, I can still select that. It's still there. The form of that's still there. It just doesn't have any color on either the fill or the stroke. So I'm going to take that, say, group. And then I'm going to try to create a brush out of that. And I think I'm going to have to orient that T differently, a pattern brush. Uh, yes, but I'll show you what this does. Time zone, OK. And now if I've got uh, a time zone line that does this, I can come over here and I can apply the brush. Uh, there, now I've got T's going all across the line. That's not exactly what I want though. I want the T's to follow the other direction. So I do have to change up that. So I'm gonna delete that. That's a pretty easy fix though. There, again, there are multiple ways I could probably do that. I'm gonna trash that brush. And then I'm going to take the original T and I'm going to go arrange, uh, transform, rotate, and say, hey, let me rotate that T 90 degrees. 
Uh, let me have it going the other direction. Well, I can I can also just use the spin and hold down shift and make sure I do it that way. Now I'm going to make a new brush, pattern brush, time zone. There are different options for the corners. I'd probably want to play with that uh, if I were actually using this, since it is actually a T. What if I say none there? Say OK. Now if I draw out a line and I apply the time zone brush. Ah, there I have little T's. So I, that's possibly one of the techniques that he used to create T's, but I think it's a fantastic uh, little example of getting creative with your brushes. Actually, I don't think his T's are uh, curved along a line. I think they're always straight. But then again, most of the lines on time zones are straight anyway. Let me draw a straight line. And what happens when I apply this? Yeah, I get all the T's stacked up. Anyway, I think it's an interesting little uh, uh, activity, little bonus activity here when thinking about brushes, uh, showing you something different to do. And really the power and, and possibility that you have with your different line symbols uh, when you're trying to, when you're using brushes. There's a tremendous amount of power in using brushes to do your line symbols. Really make sure you take a lot of advantage of it. It's also really going to simplify your cartography and it is going to let you do more in less time. We've already mentioned that designing quality maps anyway is something that's going to take a lot of time, but if you set up your uh, brushes just like you set up your colors in advance, it will dramatically reduce the amount of time that you spend creating maps. It'll allow you to create better maps, uh, and it'll, it'll make them much more professional and much more polished if you let Illustrator take care of a lot of the details of making sure the curves are right and so forth, and don't try to do them yourselves. All right, so go ahead and set up some amazing brushes uh, for your cartography and uh, play around with it and see what you can do.